Um, <clears throat> I will not go into any of the history of this issue. I think you've, uh, I think the board is pretty well aware of it, uh, other than to report on the current status of the agreement and the, and the referendum. Um, almost one year ago, uh, the board and uh, the director asked me to work with the city to develop a turnback agreement for uh, SR 89A, uh, uh, portions of SR 89A within the, the city of Sedona. Uh, the single instruction I received uh, from both the director and the board was to make this happen as uh, absolutely soon as possible, uh, given our continuing liability on the route. Uh, ADOT staff, uh, Sedona staff, and the AG staff worked very hard to develop an agreement which ADOT, the board, and the city uh, agreed to by the end of February. Um, <clears throat> Article 1, paragraph 1.1 of the transfer agreement states, uh, quote, ADOT shall pay the city $10,650,550 on or before June 30th, 2011. ADOT shall give the city 30 days notice of the date of the payment. The first calendar day after the date of the payment shall be the, quote, transfer date. That's the date that the city would be responsible uh, for the, the uh, transfer facilities. If ADOT does not pay the city $10,650,550 on or before June 30th, 2011, A, this agreement shall be immediately terminated without further action by either party. B, ADOT shall continue to own, control, and maintain the transfer segment and C, neither party will be responsible for constructing or financing the future projects. <clears throat> As you are all aware, the city has determined that due to a pending referendum action by the voters of Sedona, the city has stayed from enacting any provisions of the agreement until such time as there is a vote on the referred action. This stay includes allowing the city to, quote, accept full ownership, control, and maintenance responsibility over the transfer segment, unquote, upon receipt of the $10.65 million, $10 million payment by ADOT as required by paragraph 1.3. It is my understanding that the city has not yet set a date for the referendum election. Uh, it is also my understanding that the city currently does not intend to set a date for the election until, the latter, until either the latter part of June or July. Uh, the city has indicated that it may set the date uh, of, of November 8th for the special election on this matter, uh, but has not done so yet. <clears throat> it is also my understanding that if a special election is not set, the matter is to be referred to the next general election of the city, uh, which will be, I think, sometime next spring, either March or sometime between March and May of 2012. Uh, the city has expressed to the department and the board a strong preference that the agreement somehow be extended or preserved until after the election takes place, although it has yet to give the department a solution as to how that might be accomplished without some additional action on the part of the city council, which action itself could be subject to another referral action. The city has also indicated that it feels strongly that the department and the board should take no further action uh, on the transfer until after the city's, uh, city's citizens of Sedona have had a chance to vote on the action of the council so that the wishes of the citizens may be heard. The chairman has asked that the department review um, the continuous lighting uh, project, um, it re I'm sorry, re review and update uh, the costs of the continuous lighting project. Uh, the latest engineer's estimate as shown in the PRB form in your packet uh, is $2.3 million. This is $300,000 more than the amount that was programmed for the project in the FY 2011 program. Uh, and that uh, is um, my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions from board members? Uh, hang on a second, Steve. <coughs> So that Mr. Christie can hear about about Kelly. Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a, a comment following Mr. McGee's remarks. There are really two issues here now that I believe face the board. One, as you've heard from folks um, in letters and in testimony, is the safety of 89A and the installation of those lights. Um, the other issue is who has the power in Sedona 
to approve of a transfer agreement with the state? Is it the city council or is it the people themselves? And in my mind, those two issues have become somewhat conflated together now. And really what, what the board, I believe, needs to decide is, from a safety perspective, do those lights need to go in? As ADOT has said, we respect the people's right to speak on who has the power to initiate a transfer agreement and approve it. And I would recommend and ask the board to let them move forward to decide on that question. But in the meantime, I would also point out to the board, there is a safety issue that needs to be addressed and resolved while that process takes place. Okay, good backdrop. Mr. Christie? Just a, a question regarding the increase in the cost of the, uh, that was initially projected in the prior year's program. I think uh, John said it was up, what, $200,000 over the original estimate? 300. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Christie, uh, Christie 300000 Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Christie, um, if, the if the board were to decide to go forward with the continuous lighting project, uh, just like any other uh, project, before we get ready to advertise it, we, we do a final engineer's estimate uh, to ensure that we have uh, sufficient funds in the program. And where we do not, uh, that goes through the PPAC and comes to this board, and we do those um, uh, pretty routinely uh, every month. So. Uh, this would be, uh, no, uh, the, the process would be no different than uh, any other um, uh, project that was getting ready to go to bid where there was additional funding needed. It would come to this uh, board and the board would approve the additional funding for it. So addressing that increase would be a routine matter, basically? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Christie, yes, we do that. Uh, we do that with uh, lots of projects during the year. Okay, let me let me ask a quick a quick question of the attorney. Uh, this agreement that that has been approved previously is through June thirtieth. So any action we need to take, and I'm I'm, I'm looking as so I'm asking, any action that the board may take one way or another is based on the termination on June thirtieth. Is that correct, or can you give us? Some details on that? Sure, Mr. Chairman. According to the um, the agreement, it is in effect until June 30th. Just come a little bit closer. Sure. According to the agreement, it is in effect until June 30th. So uh, that agreement will be in place, so any action would have to take place after the termination of the agreement. So a motion would need to be set based on June 30th? If the, if the agreement should terminate, this is what has to happen. Okay, all right. So we're clear on that. Did you hear that, Mr. Christie? I did, but say it again. Okay. One more time. As it stands, the agreement is in effect until June 30th, 2011. Uh, any action taken would have to be taken uh, contingent upon the agreement terminating on June 30th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Thoughts from board members? Discussion? Um, I, I would like to um, uh, take option number one, uh, where it states that we should allow SR 98, the agreement, to automatically terminate on June and instruct ADOT to pursue all actions necessary to install continuous roadway lighting after the SR 89 transfer agreement terminates. Because I think the safety issue far outweighs the cost that we would have to the funding that we would have to come up with, $300,000, is nothing compared to a value of life and safety. So um, I would recommend to do so. You're doing that in the form of a motion? Yes, I am. Okay, then let's have a, a second so that we can move into discussion. I'll oh, second. Second by Hank. All right, um, comments from board members on the motion? M Mr. Mr. Chairman, on, on, on uh, on one of the documents that we got, I, I, uh, it, it referred to 
the fact that the transfer agreement was executed in March uh, and, and, and consequently there may have been some other projects that were started. Uh, so I, I guess clarification from staff as to whether or not we've done anything that we'd, uh, that we'd have to undo. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Flores, the other projects were uh, uh, two projects we combined together. One was a pavement preservation project through 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 this stretch where, where the lights are going, plus a little bit farther, about another mile or so longer than that, as well as signals, uh, traffic signal at uh, an Andante Drive, which is again within the uh, limits of where the lighting would be. That project, uh, once we knew that that we were starting to have concerns about uh, the the project, the lighting, and, and what might ultimately. We put that project on hold. It, it had advertised, uh, but it is on hold now. We have not accepted any bids, and, and we've deferred it until we get some resolution to decide uh, the direction to move forward. It is our recommendation that if we have an ultimate decision and lighting or something would be to go back in, we're going to amend the existing contract to add that. So we have one contract with one contractor out there working within the same work zone. We don't have multiple contractors stepping over each other. So the existing condition, the pavement preservation signal project, is on hold until uh, we make further decisions as far as what to do with uh, any lighting or any other scope changes to that project. Sure. And also, Floyd, those two projects were going to be also sponsored by the city of Sedona, right? Some of, some of the money was going to come from the locals on those two projects? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Lundstrom, there was some uh, uh, scope work added in there that the city paid for, uh, some minor amount, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of additional improvements. That is included in that, that is also uh, so part of that. So that have to be refunded, Floyd, to the, the locals, uh, since now if we do go forward with the lighting project, that funding would essentially go away, they would not be responsible? Well, th that's a separate agreement, that, that funding is still oh. there. That scope would stay in there, we'd have to, to go back and take that agreement out and take oh. it, the scope out of that project, that stays there. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Lundstrom, if I could address that. Uh, there was indeed uh, some funding that was essentially match, federal match, that was supposed to come from the city. Those monies were going to come from the $10.65 million we were going to give them anyway. So since we're not giving them the $10.65 million, it's, uh, we're, funding the, we're funding the thing 100% either way. All right. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Good. Then, as I understand the motion and the second, that we, we would authorize staff to move forward with the bid process for the lights and the safety issues related to that. And it is totally unrelated, as Mr. Olkowski pointed out, to what the referendum may bring to conclusion in November or some other date. Are we, are we clear on that? Okay. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. I can call the question. All right. You beat me to it. All in favor? Aye. All right. You opposed? No. Okay. No no's. All yeses. All right. Thank you for that.